Watch this. And I don't think I'm being flippant by saying Governor Little is a tease. He spent this morning talking to members of the Idaho Press Club, trying to set the stage for his State of the State address coming up on Monday. He fielded questions for a full hour. Those in attendance looking for a preview of what he might say in his speech to the legislature and the voters. But he wasn't offering up too many details, which isn't too surprising. We wanted to see what we uh, get some in. Andrew Bartlett, I'm sorry, was there this morning at that attend or is in attendance and is at the State House right now. One of the things, one of the people trying to get some insight on what his mind or what's in his mind. Idaho has quite a bit of change in its pockets, Andrew, to the tune of about $1.6 billion, a surplus. Did you get any insight onto what the governor would like to do with this money? He gave us a few details, not a ton, didn't go into ex uh, explicit details about it. We do know that the state got this money by being frugal and not being very big spenders. Governor Little says he continues uh, to go down that path. He doesn't expect the state to be spending a ton of money. I think he used the term at one point, spending money willy nilly. Um, so a little bit of humor there from the governor. Um, but the issues that the press kept bringing up kept coming back to the surplus, whether it's about child care worker shortage, a labor shortage in general, the housing crisis we're going through, funding public education, it all would come back to the surplus. And the conversation started to be, are these the kinds of problems we're going to open up the checkbook and put some money toward? The governor responded that he's looking at the budget through a five-year lens. We will not be um, willy-nilly spending money. Uh, we're we're anticipating that uh, that we're sure not going to increase this, uh, continue with this way, uh, way over our projection revenue going into the future. But we're going to have a new base because of all the all the new jobs, all the new wealth that's been created here. Now, when pressed for further details, that's when the governor would defer and say on Monday at my state of the state address, that's when we're going to have those finer details. There's a whole legislative session that's probably going to answer a lot of these questions about what money is going where, why and how. Um, they also cast a wide net questions about vaccine mandates. Critical race theory was a conversation that came up at one point. Um, increased state Idaho state police at the state house for the legislative session. So touching on a lot of topics, but sticking directly to the budget, the closest thing we got to a hard answer um, was the governor's interested in making up for what he calls learning loss over the past two years. Students not being in the classroom at times um, in our public schools. Um, he, let's see what he, uh, he says, an explicit proposal proposal on Monday that in his words will make Idaho school districts quote fairly pleased. Um, so we should expect to hold him to that. Brian. All right. Be interesting to see what that looks like considering the legislature last session live a left a six million dollar grant on the table and any sort of discussion about education during the last session was met with unbiased claims of indoctrination in our schools. Andrew, this should be fun. We're looking forward to it. All right. Thank you very much. OK, so education, always a hot topic as we get into the legislative session. What about what the legislators want to see happen this session starting Monday? I mean, it's been a quick turnaround, so those ideas probably still fresh in a lot of people's minds. Legislators were working at the state house till November of last year. Remember, it marked the longest legislative session in state history. So what is on the board for the 2022 session? Last week, we heard from the Democratic leaders. Today, Joe Paris checked in with the Idaho House Speaker, Republican Scott Bedke to set the stage for the session. After wrapping up the 2021 legislative session in November, the stage is now set for Idaho lawmakers to kick off 2022. If you ask lawmakers about the unusually quick turnaround though, they'll tell you it's almost like they never left. It does have that feel to it. Uh, there's a lot of legislators that are coming into town here this weekend. I saw many of them here just a, a little while ago. Everyone is excited. House Speaker Republican Scott Bedke says, thinking back to last year's longest session ever, he knows lawmakers are motivated to hit the ground running. Desire to complete our work in a more expeditious way this year. You know, I can't predict any outcomes because everything is by a vote, but I think there is a general desire to get in and get out and be done by the end of March. Bedke says for Republican lawmakers, a major priority will be addressing the budget and major budget surplus, which sits at about $1.6 billion. Real opportunities, you know, it's just like you and your in your family budget. If you come into some unexpected money, what will you do with it? Well, you'd probably pay off debt. You'd probably fix stuff that you've been 
uh, postponing. And I think that the state's in a position to do that as, as well. Bedke adds that the budget surplus could also be used to benefit Idaho taxpayers. Last year was uh, you know, the largest tax cut in state history. And I think that we're looking at, at something that is very similar to that. It's no secret. Idaho has been discovered, Bedke says. So a major goal is making sure that Idaho keeps up with incredible growth. There's going to be increased competition for road space, water, infrastructure type things. And, uh, and we need to be about making prudent, timely, targeted investments in the infrastructure. Through the coronavirus pandemic, a major conversation has remained education and making sure that Idaho students stay on track. Bedke says that will certainly still be a priority for Republicans this session. Public schools. Uh, you know, there's starting to be reports coming out that we maybe slipped a little, little bit on some of our literacy programs. And I think that all Idahoans expect us to get on top of that and, uh, and, and get our kids reading at grade level. And I think that there also will be a, uh, a spirit or a desire to include parents more, to make sure that they, that they are an integral part of the curriculum choices and uh, the education choices of the kids. The elephant in the room at the state house this year are the looming primaries that will pit several lawmakers against each other in a variety of statewide races. Becky says he knows there is a lot of concern about things like lawmakers campaigning on the house floor, but Becky says he has this thought on the topic of playing politics. Good policy is good politics, and we need to everybody needs just to settle down, do their job, and do it in a way that we can be proud of and that we can go home and defend uh, our actions to our constituents. Can we just get that on a t-shirt, Joe? Everybody needs to just settle down and do our jobs. That would make a great t-shirt <laughs> 2022. I think that's what we should do. Yeah, well, it's, it's a good t-shirt that'll sell probably. But, you know, <laughs> exactly. in all seriousness, Brian, there's a lot of action that's going to really kick off on Monday and our team will all be down there for the state of the state address as well as getting some live reaction from lawmakers. We really want to find out what they feel heading into the session. And, of course, today we, uh, we checked in with Scott Bedke with the Republicans. If you missed it last week, we actually checked with the Idaho Democrats and you can check really more on both of what they had to say plus extended interviews from uh, Andrew's report from earlier all that available at KTVB.com but Brian of course the legislative session kicks off on Monday and the 208 team the KTVB team we're ready to hit the ground running so it's it really is like we never left well, let's just do it with like a just a speed walk maybe no you're not get into running right away we'll just kind of ease into it just That's, a you stretch this Stre weekend exactly Brian. I'm glad we have a full shot you can see me getting loose here we should still be in shape I mean it wasn't that long ago we were doing this so it yeah should, it's true it's yeah. the end of November yeah. so here we are we'll do it again. again yeah all right thanks Joe all right, speaking about elephants in the room, the Idaho Republican Party winter meetings kicking off this morning in downtown Boise. It didn't take long for them to address the proverbial elephant in the room, a proposed rule change that would have given the state central committee endorsement power for the Republican primaries, meaning regardless of who won the primary election, the committee could just choose another candidate if they saw fit, taking the ultimate decision power away from the people who voted. Well, this afternoon, the Rules Committee put a stop to all the worries and hand-wringing hand by unanimously voting against that proposal. It was brought forward by the Bonneville County Republicans Central Committee back in November. The committee said they wanted to make this rule change in part because several entities, and they say including the media, were encouraging people to register as a Republican in order to be able to maybe sabotage their primary. A move, we're told by the Ada County Clerk, doesn't really happen that often. Tom Luna, the chair of the Idaho Republican Party, said the committee decided the rule change idea was too restrictive. Echoing the sentiments of the Rules Committee, Governor Little this morning said of the proposal, not a big fan. I'm a big baller, what's the game about? I live in a potato house. I live in a potato house. I live in a potato house. I'm a big baller, what's the game about? I live in a potato You know, we drop a lot of potatoes in this place, but that video that just dropped may be one of the hottest. Before we get to that, though, let's make sure we make some time to get your questions and comments sent into the show. Text them to us right now, 208-321-5614. Just be sure to include your name and the hashtag, the 208. And remember, if it's a good one, we might share yours at the end of the show. Potatoes out, hit potato spots with the tater thighs. Better bring the chips because I make a lot. I'm a just tater of just taters.
A week ago today, the Boise State Broncos would have been heading back home from Tucson, either with a Barstool Sports Arizona Bowl trophy, which I assume would be a Barstool, right? Or they'd be coming home wondering what happened. Would have been, but they never did because, well, they never left. COVID caught them from behind like a safety running down the sideline. The Broncos had to withdraw from the game because of too many coronavirus cases. Unfortunately, the folks from, folks from Barstool Sports, the sponsor of the Big Bowl, They'd already come out to Boise and it started to get to know the area a bit, already created some content that they plan to run during the bowl game. That content meant to highlight or maybe in this case poke fun at our love for potatoes. Segments remained unseen until yesterday, including one part of a video we can't unsee. I'm a big baller, what's the game about? I live in a potato house. I live in a potato house. I live in a potato house. Potato house with potato head. Making bread is potato bread. Y'all small fries and copycats. Get buttered up, hit the monster mash. Hit the monster mash. Just in the last 24 hours, this video has gotten hundreds of thousands of views on social media and nothing better than Spuddy Buddy as a groupie, right? So how did this happen? When we talked to the Idaho Potato Commission this afternoon, they say Barstool reached out to them. They said they wanted to talk to a potato farmer, visit a potato field, but they forgot it's the middle of December and it's not really the best time for potato farming. So they pivoted. They actually got to take a ride in the big Idaho potato truck that you saw there to the potato hotel, which is kind of out south of town. And what was one of the, well, I guess the coldest day of the year. The original plan was to just get some footage of the hotel and then head back. So the original idea was how do we glorify the potato? How do we put a crown on the spud? And, and we wanted to do that in any way possible. So we got out to the potato hotel and they busted out this song that apparently Adam Farone had written like the day before and did the music and everything like the day before they arrived. So, um, so we did know they were going to do the video. I think it's hilarious <laughs> and it's, it's really fun. The whole video itself that incorporates like the advocacy for Idaho potatoes, um, you know, a lot of what we're about for the marketing campaigns that we do, such as the big Idaho potato truck and the big Idaho potato hotel. What a fun modern spin to put a rap song out there with Spuddy Buddy, you know, that it was, it was fantastic. That potato house or hotel she's talking about actually a giant potato the potato hotel they call it it's an airbnb it was actually the potato the idaho potato commission used to take on tour across 48 states but it is an airbnb located on 400 acres of farmland between boise and mountain home it's a one bedroom one bathroom eco-friendly potato there's the inside of it yep all white inside it comes with a mini fridge an old record player and of course dolly the cow you saw her in the video she's outside of course and it is still available to rent on Airbnb. And you can watch that entire Barstool Sports video right now in this story at ktvb.com. But be warned, yeah, it's going to be an earworm. And it's a good one, though. Play it again, will you?
Earlier this week, we learned about a Boise-based t-shirt company that was getting one-star reviews for their products because a couple of customers didn't quite get the joke. Banana Inc. is the company. As unique as Idaho is as a state in its shape, the mountains, the forests, the rivers, the potatoes, the lentils, the hops, I guess the gem state isn't quite unique enough for some people and prone to confuse others, at least those buying gem state gifts online. Hats, t-shirts, sweatshirts, baby shirts. You can buy a lot of stuff from Banana Inc., the Boise Bay shop with a lean toward the local. And some stuff... For us, it's just funny at this point. Only locals would understand. Oh yeah, it is a very popular one. It's the Iowa shirt, and they've sold it for years. I mean, we just had the holiday season, and it was definitely one of our best sellers. I mean, it's Idaho, just not by name. There's a lot of people that love that design and, and think it's pretty funny. Except, apparently, two people who just bought one and filed online reviews to prove it. Just all of a sudden, like two in the last month. Two in the last month. I couldn't believe the, the coincidence of two people leaving a one-star review. That Iowa baby onesie, they said, says Iowa, but that's the state of Idaho. And that Iowa crew sweatshirt, wrong state, exclamation point. And then went on to further explain, the shape of the state is Idaho, not Iowa. They were upset. <laughs> they were. They were very surprised, we're shocked at, at, that we would be putting Iowa on the state shape of Idaho. So it's a little inside joke for all our locals. If you're an Idahoan, you know. It's true. If you know, you know. Hashtag. And many do know, according to the comments. Escobar has an aunt who asks all the time, how's life in Iowa? It cracks me up every time because we always tell her, Idaho, we live in Idaho. Gwendolyn once had an artist flying in from New York City for a lecture. She wasn't at the Boise airport when we went to get her. Apparently, she was in Des Moines and angry about nobody coming to pick her up. Megan, born and raised in Idaho, now living in West Virginia. So many people here think it's next to Illinois. LOL, laughy face emoji. Eric, also born and raised in Idaho and went to a Denny's in DC. When they told the waitress they were from Idaho, she responded, I hear Iowa's a great place. Really flat though. Real Idahoans get it, Eric says. And they have for some time. And this design, this shirt that you have has been around for a while. It has. So it was actually designed by uh, Jan Bowles in the 1970s. So it must have been an inside joke even then. At this point though, you're probably thinking there's at least two people out there walking around with an Idaho shaped shirt with Iowa on it and have no idea why or what it means. Exactly, exactly. I wonder how many haven't even realized it yet, potentially. <laughs> <laughs> Lana can sort of understand the confusion. He starts with an I, there's an O in there, I don't know, an A, like, what can you do? I don't know, maybe look at the product description? A warning, a disclaimer before you purchase, you actually have to re-click a button to make sure you know what the state shape is. You know, it's already on there, plain as day, that this is a joke, so, um, you know, I don't know really what to do at this point, but I think, you know, any any sort of publicity is good publicity, so if it, if it continues to get one-star ratings, maybe that's a good thing. Because, again, if you're from Idaho, you know. Yeah, exactly. So, and a lot of people do, luckily, so, and love it. Okay, yes, if you were with us on Tuesday, maybe thinking, we've already seen that story. Well, today we're starting a segment called the 208 Callback. It's just another way to continue the 208 conversation. Because we got so many text messages after that story aired, we couldn't share them all. But we wanted to share a few now. Like Diane in Meridian, who told us, we were once traveling and asked where we were from. We said, Idaho. Oh, Ohio. No, Idaho. Oh, Iowa. We gave up. Laura said her husband, while in the Navy, was asked, Idaho, isn't that in the I Belt, Illinois, Indiana, Idaho? Try living on Iowa Street in Idaho, says Tammy Sue. That's a good point. And Sally said her family moved uh, from Virginia in 1976. My friends were telling me I would be only a few hours drive from Chicago. I guess some things never change. Then we got this one from another Laura regarding the Idaho, Iowa inside joke. She asks, any idea if Iowans have the inside joke in reverse? Well, Laura, only one way to find out. Hello. Hi, Allison. Hello from Idaho. Hello from Des Moines. <laughs> Where do you work exactly? What's the name of the place? Um, it's called Ray Gun. We also call ourselves the greatest store in the universe. In Des Moines, Idaho. Yep, in Des Moines, Idaho. So. Is this a thing in Iowa? Do people confuse Iowa for Idaho? Um, in Iowa, 
Uh, not so much, uh, obviously, but I have experienced that people like confuse uh, Idaho and Iowa and Ohio before. Um, like I went to a national convention once and I said, oh, I'm from Iowa. And some kid said, oh, that's where the potatoes are, right? I said, no, it's where the corn is. <laughs> <laughs> that's, I mean, that leads to good reason why you guys sell shirts that kind of, I don't know, make fun of this confusion. Yeah, so this one says Idaho, Ohio. It says America's famous potato corn tire state. Like it connects us into like one big state. Boys Alito, and that's where the pigs are. Cleve Moyne, that's where the t tires are. Um, Akron Port, R Rocky Mountain Skiing. Yeah, this one that just says Ohio. Um, greetings from Ohio, the great potato state. And it's a shape of Iowa. And then it's a shape of Iowa, and then it has uh, Des Moines, not in the correct spot. Uh, Boise, Cincinnati, Columbus, Davenport, and Nampa. Nampa, that's awesome. Nampa getting some pub. We like to see that. And so this one is a map of the Midwest, but it's a map made by people that aren't from the Midwest. And so in Iowa, it says Ohio, and then it says I Idaho City. In Ohio, it says Idaho, it says Des Moines. This one is one of our top shirts because uh, people just think that's so funny. It's just all three of the states just all jumbled together in people's minds. Too many vowels, I guess. That's what it is. Too many vowels. Yeah, too many vowels. Mm -hmm. Sure, that's what it is. So yeah, I guess it does happen in Iowa as well. And I guess I'm gonna have to add to my t-shirt collection. Idaho, Ohio. Gotta get that one. Adding to the confusion, those Iowa t-shirts, they come in Idaho vandal colors.
All right, several of you sending in suggestions on how we can spend our big giant surplus of cash within the state. This one from Ben. Hey, Mr. Governor Brad, take some of that money and give it back to the citizens if Idaho, of Idaho to help cover costs. Hashtag the 208. The solution to deal with the ongoing huge budget surplus is to reduce the sales and income taxes. That would be conservative values says that person who didn't include a name. I've lived in Idaho for 43 years and would love to see something done about taxes on our homes that we've lived in for more than 20 years. It's ridiculous. They have a surplus and our taxes keep going up and they do nothing about it, Lynn says. They try to do something every session. Even last session, they had a big attempt, but it just kind of went flat. They pass, end up passing a very confusing one. So I guarantee they're going to try to take a look at that again because, yes, property taxes, a big deal. Taxes in general. Hey, Brian, jumping on the Iowa versus Idaho wagon. I was attending University of Iowa in 1984. A friend of mine had a T-shirt saying the University of Iowa, Idaho City, Iowa. It's been going on in both states for years, says Stephen Eagle. They have that one on their website, too. I saw it. It's the exact shirt. I grew up in Ohio. Same problem. People thought I was from Iowa, says Randy. Yeah, it's been going on for years. First, we drop a giant potato for New Year's, and now we live in a potato house. Yes, we do. I'd be embarrassed, except most of my friends think I live in Iowa. On that note, let's hear it. I live in a potato house. 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 Have a great weekend. House. We'll see you back here on Monday. Making bread is potato bread. Y'all small fries and copycats. Get buttered up, hit the monster mash. I broke down a potato house. Get the yam, put the taters out. Hit potato spots with the tater thighs. Better bring the chips, cause I make a lot. I'm a just tater of just taters. Kill a spud, premeditated.